now, 866-994-4646. Welcome back. You're listening to the Cindy Laverty Show. Thanks for staying with us. Um, my sponsor for the show is Lafrite Cafe in Sherman Oaks and Woodland Hills. Check out Lafrite on the web at lafritecafe.com and see all the yummy things that they have. Thanks, Lafrite, for being our sponsor. We love you. My guest today is Greg Hanley. He is the CEO and founder of Soba Malibu Recovery Center. Greg, thanks so much for being here. I think we have to get to some of the solution. I mean, I, you know, I love what you say on your website, which is addiction is a billboard, is a billboard that your life has become unmanageable. But I don't think we can just scare people. I think we have to give people some solutions. So sure. what do parents need to start telling their kids? How do you, how do you convince your child that this is really a bad path when it seems like a lot of them get addicted without knowledge of what they're doing well it's a um i don't know if it's a matter of convincing as much as just getting on the same page with them and talking okay. about it and 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 learning the, the first thing that um, parents need to do is educate themselves on what what's going on right and to talk about um and, and be able to have that communication line that's open and know that it is it's very possible no matter who their kid is or what their kid is or um that it's very possible that they can get caught up in this mm -hmm. and that and that the kids know that they are a safe place to uh if something is going on to be able to talk about it that they are um that they are safe to talk about it too so develop and that they, trust um, absolutely Absolutely, because they don't, um, it, it doesn't need to get to a point where something really bad has happened um, for the parents to find out. And, and again, I don't want to just have this be about, uh, about young kids because right. it is, and, and I was thinking when I was uh, on the break that you had asked what I would also advise, and, and it is to parents to lock your medicine cabinets and keep an eye at grandpa's house, grandma's house, that these kids know where they can get these pills and they know what they can sell them for and that's where it's coming from uh, a lot from the start from um, our from so, our own environments our own personal environments absolutely wow absolutely and, and if the kids are seeing mom every time that um yeah you know some little something goes on taking a xanax and, and a glass right. of wine right then it becomes something that is that's what we do. That's and what we do. This is how we thing. handle stress. We drink wine and we take a yeah. pill. Yeah, and the um, uh, the first thing I would suggest is to be a good example. Mm -hmm. And uh, be a good example and have an open line of communication. Right. And, and also know who it is. Know what's going on with your kids. Even if you're busy, even if your uh, life is coming really quickly, Keep an eye on who their friends are and who and uh, changes that are happening. And and the most important thing I say to parents is that if you think something is going on, it is. Listen it to is, your uh, intuition. For a mother's intuition, there's nothing any better than that. And, hmm. and I I, um, I always say to moms, if you think your kid is is getting loaded, he's getting loaded. And, and find out what he is doing and, and get proactive on it. And, uh, so let's say you have you know, that conversation with your child and you think something's going on and you approach them and you ask and you're calm and they just go crazy and deny it. I think that's always a big red flag. But should you then drug test? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, drug testing is going to the drugstore. It's a... Uh, Twenty dollars. They have these tests that will show twelve different types of drugs, pretty much any drugs that kids are going to use. Mm. Or and and this isn't even just. Also, if you see husband or wife coming home a little bit out of whack, right? And uh, you know, the people who get uh, get involved or get caught up in this, the first thing they want to do is deny they have a problem because they right. think they can fix it or get a get a handle on it. Well, they don't really and, think they're um, addicted. And it, and it, the, the drug tests are very easy to use. Um, you know, it's a urine sample, and you and you put a little dip in that has these um, panels on it, 
and you wait a few minutes, and there's either one line, or there's either no lines if they're on drugs, or two lines if they're not. Mm-hmm. And it'll say this is, it'll show specifically which drugs are there. Okay. So, say that somebody does have a problem, then it is, um, you know, it's it's time to take some action, and. There are so many different uh, levels of, of uh, treatment. There are so many different types of treatment centers that, that uh, it can get very confusing. And um, don't be, the first thing to, that I would suggest is talk to people who you know. Everybody, it seems, knows somebody who's been through this or right, has right. who went through it. Talk about it and get information and get resources and get referrals and and. Talk to your doctor. Doctors uh, generally know places to go. They have. Um, well, you know, Greg, what makes what makes were... SOBA different from other rehab facilities? Well, one thing that that stands out is that we're accredited. We're a uh, JCO accredited uh, facility, which probably less than one percent of drug and alcohol facilities are. And oh well, that is, seems um, like an important thing to look for. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, well, then you know that it's not just a marketing gimmick or something that's a, a program somebody made up. Right. We're audited on 11, 1,100 different points of treatment to um, maintain our accreditation. Ah. And so, so, and there's no option, financial option, to not offer certain types of treatment. Mm-hmm. Where um, if I'm not, if I'm in a different environment and I don't have that accreditation, I can, I can change it up patient to patient, uh, depending on, you know, what money I want to spend or what money I don't want to spend. Okay. And and which, you know, it's a scary thought, but for the most part, um, you know, treatment facilities, it's a a business. And there's corporate treatment, and it's about the bottom line. And so um, one thing that, that, uh, so besides the accreditation, which what it does is it not only... um, uh, it, it makes it so we, we have all different points of treatment because there are as many aspects to what needs to go on for somebody to... And some, you to, use a holistic approach to this treatment, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, when we come, is. we got to take another break, Greg. When we come back, I want to talk about what those what that approach means and what that is so that people can really get an understanding of what you do in this beautiful Malibu setting you have. You're listening to the Cindy Laverty Show. I'll be right back.